I'm Catalina Lozano. I'm a curator based in Mexico City, and I'm the curator of this exhibition called A Natural History of Ruins. I'm very happy to finally open this show that conveys a lot of ideas I've been working on in the past few years. Um, and especially two, let's say, two main strands of thought that come together here. One has to do with language and, or rather sometimes communication without language or, or the absence of language in communication. And the other has to do with um, an interrogation or a questioning of the separation between the notions of nature and culture which I think it's, a, it's a, an artificial separation produced by modernity, but that has very large implications in the way we imagine uh, the world, in the ways we imagine the future, but also how we relate to, the, to our past and present. In general, it's important that uh, most of these artists are interrogating this division between nature and culture or inhabiting it in complex ways. And I'm interested in this complexity rather than offering answers or like uh, even alternatives. What I'm interested in is the question and how that question is inhabited by different practices or interrogated and how we are kind of inhabiting that question all the time. Especially now that we have a virus uh, in the air uh, that is permeating our bodies and the exhibition has to do a lot with this uh, idea of bodies uh, permeating each other and contaminating each other. So in a way, curatorially, the exhibition has a bit of that contamination between works, which I find important. So not to separate uh, each artist's practice from the others, but to have a bit of a fluid relationship between the works. So the exhibition starts with two works that deal with language in different ways. One is Fantomas by Daniel Stigman Mangrané. It's a sort of alphabet that in inhabits the space that we encounter little by little and their work like apparitions in a way. Like ghosts or fantasmas. On the other hand, there is a work by David Bestué that deals with an attempt to translate poetry into a material form. So David is very interested in these translations from language to matter, how they perhaps fail, but how they produce these weird objects that he creates by using specific, very specific materials. This is a table made of salt and glycerin. It has a sort of sexual character in a way. There are other works that we can grasp more through uh, our relationship to the very same objects. For instance, in the work of Ma uh, Max Willa Moraes, who created these um, sculptures that demand people's attention and participation for their existence. Max is not interested in the decay of this life, but more in the interaction that we as visitors to the exhibition can have with this, that these are consumed, but not consumed in a capitalist way, but more in a generous way of uh, interacting with these objects. In a different way, but I think somehow related, there are these works by Cristiano Lenard, which are almost like portraits of the place where he decided to live in rural Pernambuco. They are uh, testimonies of this relationship uh, and this state of embeddedness uh, of inhabiting a place and being in relationship with all these uh, forces. And then, for instance, the work of Lina Massenet and David Quiroga also talk about a specific place and ways of understanding that place and how they're as, as artists translate this understanding. So, this video is a very simple yet evoking gesture of bringing gold back into earth 
and these ants transport leaves that have been covered with gold leaf and they bring it back to earth. In this sculpture, they, they use bicycle tires to emulate the skin of uh, snakes, one belonging to the Amazon, one belonging to the Middle East, creating this relationship that is pretty much a poetic relationship, but that evokes these ecological connections that are very important. Actually, the work of Daniel Stigman van Thomas has a lot to do with another work of his that is in the exhibition. He's interested in this notion that uh, Roger Quelloa explored, that these insects are not trying to hide themselves from predators, but rather uh, it's like almost an aesthetic uh, necessity they have to blend with space. They, at the same time, represent it and become it. And life forms that appear in different places are also present in the work of Paloma Bosque, who is very inspired in the uh, termite uh, mounds. These are very complex forms, uh, very strong, that are produced by millions of tiny insects uh, through their work with the earth and their saliva. The work of uh, Luigi Beltram has this also this recognition of the role of a plant in a system of healing practices that involve humans, involve a plant, involve different references to the very fact of colonization, which is the syncretism that colonization forcibly brings about. This idea of contamination and syncretism also appears in a film called La Sentinela, uh, which is a huaca, a sacred place in, the, in Peru, that has a big Catholic cross on top. And a way of being able to revisit this place was kind of make it a Catholic pilgrimage place. So he's interested in how things survive colonization through these syncretism and contamination. And then a series of prints that he made explore the ways in which San Pedro activates the possibility of objects to have an agency during the ceremonies. Images of pre-colonial objects that are perhaps taken from encyclopedias, archaeologic books or other sources, he kind of subverts this scientific view on them and through different processes, he makes them kind of bright, no? He makes them bright as if San Pedro had had an impact on them. There is another work by David Bestue, which are these light filters that are made with the colors of flowers and sugar. They are in between works and they are kind of contaminating a little bit the, the passageways and some works and work as a way of creating a little narrative around the exhibition, I think. So you get to Janaina Wagner's film Love is Omen. I think it's a very interesting way of exploring how in cultural narratives these hybrid beings or these shapeshifters are menacing figures because they menace the very idea of culture, no? of what humans think made them or make them superior to others. But then you're looking at this devastated landscape that only shows the stupidity of humanity to a certain degree. Lina Masenet and David Quiroga is like a, like a found object that they intervene and make it look like a Jacare. It's the debris that fell from a building in Tlatelolco in Mexico City after the 2017 earthquake. Like buildings shed their skins and they become this ruin, but at the same time they repurpose the ruin and make this jacare of dead building skin. Then we have the work of um, Denilson Baniwa which is very special. We have four paintings. Each of them show different aspects 
of Baniwa narratives about uh, the origin of the world and the Baniwa people. And I think this is very important for the exhibition, to bring other ways of explaining our origin in the world that are not the scientific narrative that we take for granted, but there are different ways of, of understanding a belonging to a place. Next to these paintings, there is a documentary by the Inuit collective Isuma called Inuit Knowledge and Climate Change. It talks about how uh, the idea of climate change really affects indigenous communities and their living practices on a daily basis. And they have been noticing for years and years, decades, how their daily practices are being affected by what we call climate change now. These drawings by Shero Anahue Hakihiwe are, I feel, translations on paper of um, a Yanomami painterly universe, in a way. I think he's not really representing plants or animals as we understand representation, but he is more reflecting the rhythms, traces, trails, and uh, geometries that animals and plants produce. And I think in this way he's uh, relating to an inventory of the world, but not in a scientific way. It's a different way of producing knowledge. This idea, although in a very different work, I think is, is present in Minia Viaviani's work. Minia lives in, in Guadalupe, in the Caribbean, and Guadalupe is a French colony and, and still today. And Minia is very interested in researching and exploring how colonialism has had an, a, a devastating impact in the Caribbean, but also has produced all these relationships and cultural practices that reflect very well the history of exchange and, and colonialism there. And that is also accompanied by, by the work of Elvira Espejo, who is an Aymara artist, uh, researcher, and she's a weaver. And this idea of belonging to an ecology and being entangled in it is very important also in Elvira Espejo's work. In this particular work, she's thinking of the act of spinning a thread and how it is connected to a particular rhythm and how it is a practice that connects one with uh, a place, a culture, an ecosystem. She's also reflecting on, on these rhythms and practices that connect her body to a particular place and a particular set of practices she belongs to. And then Max will amortize drawings. They have a lot of movement. And even if sometimes they're not entirely recognizable animals or things that we can put a name on, they are kind of relating to each other somehow. I feel they're very based on, on this idea of dancing, which is a relational practice. And uh, again, as, as she says, like dancing with the violence of the world is a way of dealing with this violence, I find. And uh, the video by Candice Lynn called A Whole New Animal, it's a video that really embraces this idea of hybridity and contamination to talk about the effects of colonialism, but also how these very effects can uh, go against what produced them. So uh, she's not interested in purity or in pure races or pure uh, genders or pure sexualities but on the entanglement and uh, contamination between things. So she's, she's really going against idea, an idea of a binary separation or a clear-cut separation that can provide univocal definitions. So there is sometimes a sound of a flute playing. It's a sort of industrial, extractivist sound land landscape of the extraction of petroleum 
in, in Brazil. This translation or interpretation uh, of, the, of these sounds that uh, Joanna does by playing the flute, listening to the recording, uh, makes it like embody, embodies this, this landscape in, in one body. Mm -hmm. 